Hello! Welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello, uh, thank you for that introduction, Pragma. Welcome to Code Zero at ZimJS.com. I'm Dr. Abstract. All right, let's dig back into the code where we were in the last Code Zero. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. We had made a dial. We added that to the stage and positioned it. And we found out when the dial changed. We called this function that set the radius of a circle to the current value of the dial. We also didn't want to jump in there, uh, so we set the dial's current value to the circle radius to start. So this code right here happens right away as everything's getting set up. You see these things happen in order. We made a circle up above. We've made a dial. We've applied this event, and we'll come back to that. Uh, we've set the current value of the dial, and then we stage.update. So after this first stage.update is when everybody sees what we've done. <laughs> it's the reveal. So if we were to take the dial's current value and put it after the stage.update, we wouldn't see it until the next stage.update. Now another thing that happens here, uh, we've set the current dial. Now you see how this happens. Uh, we, we've uh, added this code after this code here. But just beware that the code inside of this will not run until later, until somebody actually changes the dial. So even though this code is placed in here, you see where it say, says uh, zog dial current value, if we were to run this, we would not see that zog. We would not see that log. Let's just try that. So we save that and we view it in a browser, open in browser. And we see the console, that's F12. The console just says ready from Zim. It's only when we change the dial there that we start seeing that code inside run. So once again, we have to change the dial, then we see this code. So code does not always run one line, next line, next line, next line, next line, etc. Sometimes there are blocks of code that run out of order of how you've written them. And one of those times is when there's an event like this. This event is calling a change event, and it will call this function right here. So within this function, the code inside here will run in order, and there might be many, 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 many lines of code in here. Hundreds of lines. There could be one line. There could be thousands of lines. And once again, the code that we're inside here, running in order, is actually within a function as well. I'll just review that up top here. We're in the Zim fit mode right here, and that makes a new frame. And the frame takes a little bit of time to build. We build a canvas, um, we scale it, and there's a few other things like that. So we make an event, a frame dot on ready event, and when the frame is all ready, then we will run this function. So within this block of code, we're indented. Do you see how we're indented now? We're tabbed in. All of this code will run when the frame is ready, and that goes all the way down to here, the end of ready. So in other words, if we put some code in here, uh, I can zog, yes, zog bottom like that. If we put zog bottom here after the ready, then basically this code is going to run before all of that because it takes a little bit of time, a very small amount of time to get ready. Shall we see that? So we should see zog bottom very early. If we go up here, we have a zog ready from frame. So we should see the zog bottom first and then the zog ready from frame. So we save that up and we refresh here. There's the zog bottom and there's the zog ready from frame. The zim frame is being console.logged or zogged from within zim itself. So as zim gets created, uh, it is the very first thing that's going to be running because it's sort of way up here. So our zim is way up here. Now about that, 
it's been a little while since we've done a code zero, and we've actually made some changes to Zim since then. I don't think any of the changes will really affect what we were doing because we were doing very basic code zero things, but let's update the, the value of this seven. Well, let me show you where we can find that. It's actually not seven, it's six still. <coughs> Excuse me. But if we go to the Zim site here, and we uh, take a look at the code section. The code section is sort of keeps track of uh, what's going on with our code, although the docs do that as well. But um, in, in the docs, let's just quickly go to the docs. It says we're at Zim 6.7.4 here, 6.7.4, and there's updates for changes um, right here. So if we go to updates and scroll down, it says what has updated in 6.7.4. These are some things. Here's 6.7.3, etc. And it tells us about improvements and parts where things break and all that kind of stuff. So this is a place where you can go to find out the updates. But also in the code section itself right here, it tells you you can start with a Zim zip. So that will have the updated code. The Zim frame will have the updated code, but perhaps now the easiest way to, to begin is just with the template right here, or copy and paste the code. So if we hit copy, that just copies all of the template code. Uh, this little top area has changed a bit, so I'm going to copy the whole top area as well, right there. Just the script and the end of script, so this stuff, not the initial comments, although... Uh, those may have changed too. And we come back in here and we paste in here like so. Boop, like that. Let's take a look. So we have actually brought in the new CreateJS. That's fine. And then we've got a little bit of script that happens before we load our Zim. And there's the latest Zim. We used to have this script too, or, or this one right here, Zon True. So that turns comments on. If you don't want to see any comments in the console from Zim, then you can set that to false. This other one here stands for Zim namespace. So that's just a variable, Z and S. And currently it's false, which means we do not require the Zim namespace. In the past, when we were doing these code zeros, it was true. So that meant that we did need to use the Zim namespace. Um, a namespace is just a way that the Zim code will not get mixed up with other code. But most of the time, we're just using the Zim code. So 95%, uh, maybe even more, 95% of the things that we'll make, we're just using Zim code, and so it's not going to get mixed up with anybody else's code. And we were looking at other libraries that are out there, such as uh, processing or p5.js, which is a very common one, a very well-established one. It doesn't use namespaces. And so we're sort of um, saying, hey, you know, we don't want to make it any more difficult for people who are beginning to code with code zero, so perhaps we should also remove the namespaces. What that means is we no longer have to say it's a Zim frame. We'll assume that there's no other code here that has a frame and therefore we take that away. Now, if it ever turns out that you start using Zim, perhaps embedded in an HTML page, which you can do, say, for an interactive ad or an interactive logo or a small feature of a page, and there's all sorts of other libraries being used, and you might be worried, oh, what if the Zim circle is the same as somebody else's circle? Then you can bring the namespace back. Or if you're a professional coder and you really love using namespaces, you see the, the, the value in them, then you're welcome to uh, require the namespace. And the namespace will still work. Even if, you, um, even if you have it set up so we don't need the namespace, the namespace will still work. For instance, let's just make sure that this still works with the namespaces in. So we save that and refresh in the browser. Boop, boop. And there's the dial all still working uh, with the namespaces still in. And if we take the namespace out, so there's one, we take that one out, we come on down. There's a new Zim circle, so we don't need that one either. New circle. 
Uh, let's see, there's a new Zim dial. Take that one out, and I think that might be the last one of the namespaces. So we save that up without any of the namespaces now, and refresh here, and it still works. Good, so that was one of the, the changes. Now, remember that the namespace was just saying, uh, it was just put here, and what it really meant is that there's some object somewhere called Zim, one of these things, an object literal. Uh, let's see, where do we see an object literal? Right here. An object literal is an object that holds a bunch of properties. And there was one called Zim. And all of the classes, here's a class, the circle, here's another class, the frame, all of these classes were stored on that object, were properties of that object. And so whenever we wanted to access them, we can access them we put the object first, we use the dot syntax, and then we access its property. And since they were all stored on Zim, we would know that they wouldn't get mixed up with some other libraries. But what we've done it, at the very end of Zim, as Zim loads, it takes a look at it takes a look for this variable, ZNS. And if it finds the variable and the variable is true, then it doesn't do anything more. It says, all right, we're how it used to be, where you need the namespace. But if it finds the, um, or if it can't find the variable ZNS, or if the ZNS is false, then it's going to assume, so in other words, we don't even really need that. We could turn, turn that off completely. And by default now, Zim would say, all right, I've reached the end of loading all of the Zim stuff. Um, is do I require a namespace? If I don't require a namespace, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the things that were in Zim and I'm going to put them into the global scope. I'm going to make them available without using the word Zim. <laughs> all right, so that's what that means. Um, now, we had some code before, Zog. Note that we did not say zim.zog. So zog was already without the namespace. And these were short little ones. I'll show you where we can find those. If we go to the zim site now, and back to the docs, all of these little short ones in the docs, zog, zid, these ones are primarily used with traditional HTML. But there are some later ones as well, like, uh, I don't know, that's traditional. Um, Zob we kind of use all the time, but you don't realize it. And Zik, we it's a bit advanced. So anyway, some of these other short ones we use, but Zog we were using quite often. Those were called global variables in Zim, or global functions in Zim. And they were allowed to be used without the Zim namespace. All of the rest of them, we used to have to put Zim in front, but now note, there's been a change in the documentation. This used to say Zim.shuffle, Zim.rand, Zim.loop. But if we open it up, it says, note, as of Zim 5.5.0, the Zim namespace is no longer required unless ZNS is set to true before running Zim. And all of those functions will say that. So in other words, we don't have to say Zim.shuffle the array. We can just say shuffle the array. And same for all of these, and indeed for all of our containers, for the rectangle, triangle, etc. All of the things we make used to say Zim in front. Now these ones, they still have the object in front because these are things that we do to an object. So we already have to have an object before we can drag something. And then we say, please drag that object. Those are our methods. Okay, so that is the latest code zero on the namespace change. You'll see that a lot of the examples, the current examples, don't use a namespace. So we thought we needed to insert that in here into the code zero so you'd be aware of what's going on. In our next code zero, we'll take a look at chaining, which is something we mentioned we would talk about, and then followed by events. 
as well. So we're inserting a few new things here into the Code Zero series. If you haven't checked out the other Code Zeros, uh, please do so. There's uh, some excellent information there and look forward to the next ones. I am Dr. Abstract and also a Merry Holiday from, uh, from Pragma as well. She says hello. All the best. Ciao.